Good morning, East Brunswick. It is Thursday, April 2nd, and as promised, I'm giving you an update on the COVID virus crisis as it affects those of us that live here in East Brunswick. As of this moment, we're up to about 84 cases that have been confirmed COVID cases, and we still stand at one death. Um, in terms of trying to be completely transparent in terms of what's going on, I've promised people that I would give updates, but I'm not going to give a daily log of number of cases because the caseload that affects one particular town doesn't really follow any particular curve. We know from looking at state data, at country data, at world data, that the number of cases continue to rise. We're no different here. But in our little sector of the world, our 84 cases, it varies. One day it's 11, next day it's eight, next day it's 14. It's not following any pattern. It's, those patterns are more noticeable when you look at bigger pools of data. What I will promise to do and have continued to promise to do, which is to let you know if there are particularly any deaths and if there is any clustering of cases. I'm not um, going to give any information on identifying factors such as names or addresses, but to the point, uh, our Chelsea Assisted Living has had in the last 48 hours, there was a patient there or a resident there that expired. Um, because the person expired, nobody's going to do any testing on that individual, but it was a respiratory issue. There's the thought that that might have been a COVID case. And one of the 84 patients or residents from Chelsea is presently at the hospital diagnosed with COVID. We are testing individuals that are showing symptoms at the uh, Chelsea, and we're waiting for those results to come back. Um, once I have information, if it turns out that there is a clustering of cases, then of course that's gonna be made public and everyone um, will know about it, and the State Department of Health and the County Department of Health will have to take immediate actions, and we will make that uh, public when and if that that happens. The reality is for most of us, we keep saying it over and over again, is that the infection is most often felt to be spread from asymptomatic carriers, those individuals who either don't have symptoms or have such mild symptoms they don't even know. And that's where most of us are, are likely to pick up infection, which means that the entire idea of staying at home and using these precautions and hand washing is designed to really reduce that, that spread from those individuals to the, because we don't know who they are. There's also uh, growing evidence, uh, most of you are f following this on television, that our particular pattern in this country is very similar, unfortunately, to the pattern we've seen in Italy. And that's not great news. Um, but um, we also have found uh, that there is a notable finding that the pandemic in the United States uh, seems to be spreading um, with no great explainable reason to individuals who are young. Uh, and um, while most of them will survive the, the disease, why we seem to be getting more people in younger ages hasn't been yet determined by any type of scientific studies. The good news, of course, is that most people are gonna get better from the COVID infection. Um, we don't really see that. When you see 84 or any of the numbers that are being projected on the news, you don't see the number of people who've gotten better, which is the vast majority of people who get this infection. Um, we do need to keep that in mind. Uh, in order to try to uh, reduce that spread, we're emphasizing the universal precautions, such as staying at home, washing hands, keeping social distances, all of that is designed to uh, decrease the spread of disease because unfortunately at this point, as most of you know, there's no treatment and there's uh, no vaccine. It will um, lead me to my strong encouragement that people start using face masks in public locations. And I'm gonna talk about that uh, in a little bit later when I talk more about masks. I wanna remind everybody that the municipal buildings are closed. But the business of the town continues to go on. Uh, please call or email any department, any individual, and um, we will make sure that we get back to you with any of the township concerns. Township business must go on. We're trying to keep in the building only essential personnel. Everybody else is working remotely. 
Parks and Rec Department is actively looking for ideas for virtual programs, um, performances, lectures, art contests, games. Any suggestion that you might have for things that we could do virtually from home, please send those to the Parks and Rec Department using the email for the, the department. And we're um, actively looking to put on some programs. Now that people are kind of stuck at home, maybe it gives uh, great ideas that uh, you can come up with that we can implement uh, for the rest of the, the township. Right now, for those of you who have been questioning me regarding the property taxes and whether they will be uh, deferred, again, as I've said mentioned uh, previously, property taxes and any deferral has to be determined by the state. And since the um, uh, state is still yet to figure out what they're going to be doing and how we're going to get our share of the uh, CARES grant that was supported uh, by both houses and the Senate um, and signed by the president hasn't been yet determined how that's going to trickle down to states and therefore to counties and municipalities. So they're not really ready to make any decision on what they're doing with property taxes and that would have to come from the state. Um, what I can announce is that the federal and state deadline for filing your 2019 taxes has been extended to July 15th of 2020, and that the state's tax year, which normally goes from July 1st to June 30th, has been moved, and that's now extended to September 1st of this year. But again, how any of the aid that's going to get trickled down to the towns um, is to be worked out, hasn't been determined yet at the state level, and therefore we really don't have an idea what we're going to be doing with state taxes. Keep in mind, however, that um, your property taxes go towards supporting all of the township programs that we rely on at this point in time and many of the state programs that we're all relying on at this time. So it's a vicious cycle. If taxes aren't paid, then uh, teachers won't, uh, school systems may have to let people go. The uh, state may not be able to provide programs that we are desperate in need of right now. So I don't know if there's going to be any big decision on deferring property taxes. Many of you uh, may have heard that the state has now worked with a lot of mortgage uh, lenders to try to provide a 90-day deferral of your mortgage payments. If you qualify, I would suggest very strongly that you contact your lender. Uh, for those of you who um, have their uh, escrows set aside for property taxes, um, if property taxes are not um, deferred, you will still need to make sure those are paid. If they are paid, are they going to be paid out of your escrow? Is there going to be a process for replacing escrows? Those type of things you need to find out. Many people have uh, a large portion of their uh, mortgage payment is interest especially those early on in the mortgage process. Are those interest payments going to be deferred? These, I think, are questions that you're going to need to ask your lender. Township website also has a lot of information. I suggest people go on to it. Just click the button that has to do with COVID, and you're going to see that it's a very robust page that keeps getting updated all the time. There's contacts and links uh, to the state uh, going over all of the executive orders the governor has issued, any updates on those executive orders. There's information for businesses, information on taxes, unemployment, uh, mechanisms for those of you who are working who feel that your employer might be um, violating some of the executive orders. There's ways to contact the state and let them know about that. Contacts for the New Jersey State Department of Health, um, the WHO, CDC, uh, federal government. So I think that the links are very, very important and they're constantly being updated. There's links for East Brunswick TV where this uh, is being taped today and a lot of the previous tapes, interviews that people have done in the past, all of that's on there. Again, there's updates on restaurants and takeout uh, for those uh, individual uh, uh, restaurant owners who want to be included, please send that information to um, the Parks and Rec Department uh, to contact Rick Perrine, who's working on keeping that updated. Uh, the site also has all of our Nixle updates. We have, um, so I think it's a great, great opportunity for people to um, learn about what's really all at your fingertips uh, regarding COVID. 
Also want to give a big shout out to our East Brunswick Public Library, which has a number of programs that are being operated on virtually. So whether it's programs, uh, there's classes specifically on uh, topics such as Zoom, which has become a very popular way of conducting meetings, Canopy, Hulu, um, a, a lot of uh, virtual books, movies, programs. Uh, and and uh, that's constantly being updated. The library um, uh, personnel uh, are available to answer questions. We have a great health desk for those of you that have health questions related to the virus or anything health related. All of those people are working, but working remotely. I strongly encourage you uh, to, uh, to look at the library, uh, public library website. And for those who haven't really utilized it in the past, it might be a great opportunity for you to get a sense of how much of a gem our library really is and how many programs are available that you might not have known even existed. So we take uh, these type of uh, circumstances that we're in and try to make the, mess, the best out of it. I want to talk a little bit about masks because I know a lot of people are sort of questioning um, uh, whether or not it's worth using them, the differences between them. We've got N95 masks that people talk about. We have regular masks that we see people wearing and we also see people making homemade masks. An N95 mask is a mask that is for the most part far more useful for the person wearing it to prevent that person from getting disease than it is from preventing that person from giving the disease to somebody else. The 95 means that it's basically filtering out 90%, 95% of the particles coming into that mask. It's great at filtering particles coming in, so it's great for the person who's wearing it. But for a surgeon, they don't use N95 masks in the OR. If I sneeze into one of those masks, all those particles that's now on it will be right into the surgical field. So it's, again, better for the person wearing it than, 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 and protects that person than for others. Regular masks that you've seen people wearing, either the ones that tie in the back or the ones that are behind the ear, those are far better useful um, are far more useful for those individuals to prevent that person wearing it from giving it to somebody else. Um, many times there's openings on the side, so they're not 100% great at preventing you, the wearer, from getting it from people around you. Controversy exists on whether it's beneficial to be using them in general when you go in public, and I'm kind of from the philosophy that I think it's better off to do it than to not do it. A lot of the controversy comes over the fact that if you're not used to wearing masks, a lot of times you'll play around. It's not the most comfortable thing to wear. So if you are wearing it and you're, again, preventing yourself from sneezing or coughing and getting that on somebody else, um, it does do a little bit of prevention of disease from other people, but don't start touching your mask. Uh, many times masks are uncomfortable. If you start playing with the mask and now touching your face, you've defeated the entire purpose of wearing that mask. So if you're going to wear a mask, which I encourage you to do if you're going to go out in public, keep it on, don't touch it, leave it alone. Um, it's good at preventing you from touching your face, so, so, so please take and heed the advice and leave it on, don't touch it. When you're done, throw it in the garbage. Handmade masks um, are becoming popular now because it's so difficult to get masks. Um, they are, in general, better than not doing anything at all. Um, and again, they help prevent you from spreading disease to other people. Uh, and I encourage people uh, to do that. It's controversial now whether or not the handmade masks, how much it's preventing you from getting disease from other people. Uh, but it does help prevent you from giving it to others. So if we all were to use masks in public places, then the likelihood of the transmission of disease will go down. There's no real great studies that have been done yet uh, on masks. The problem is we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. Maybe in 2030, 10 years from now, when people can look back retrospectively at what worked and didn't work, we maybe have uh, be able to have great answers on what works and doesn't work, but we're prospectively in the middle of a crisis. And right now, it seems from the evidence of 
countries, in fact, that did start using universal masks, that they seem to have a lower rate of infection. And as a result, people are starting to suggest that because of those experiences, it might work here. Reality is, it's not going to hurt to wear a mask. It can only help. And so my suggestion for most people is going to be if you're going to be going out in public places, groceries, pharmacies, uh, and where you're going to be in contact with other people, where you can't always be certain that people are going to keep that six feet distance, I think it makes sense for those of us um, to all be using the, the masks, whether they are the masks that you can get, uh, medical masks, or whether they're masks that people are making. I think it's if we all use it, it probably will be helpful. Speaking of the using of masks, though, um, we've noticed an increase in litter. Uh, people who go into supermarkets and then take the mask off and realize by the time they got to their car that they don't want that mask in their car. So they take their masks or their gloves and just litter, throw it on the floor. That to me, it's no different than blowing your nose and throwing the tissue on the floor. It's disgusting. And we're taking that type of behavior very seriously here in East Brunswick. And our police will be issuing summons and fines to individuals who we catch doing that and, uh, with, and that's going to be the case whether you do that uh, on private property or on public property. It doesn't matter. We have the right and will enforce um, people doing the right thing. Take the mask off before you, after you leave the store, throw it in the garbage, just like you would throw a tissue or anything else that has uh, bodily secretions. And uh, it's grossly unfair to ask other people to clean up after you. As far as um, news for the township, the um, county, um, we talk to them very regularly, and we're pleased to announce that there is a new um, testing site at the Kilmer Motor Vehicle uh, site in Edison. Uh, that's going to be testing for the coronavirus. I would suggest that you go on to the county or state website that lists all of the places where there's testing um, because there are restrictions with that site. You have to have symptoms, you have to have a, that or a prescription from your doctor. You also have to be a Middlesex County resident and be able to show proof that you're a Middlesex County resident. The test will take three to five days to be returned and you will only get positive results. They will not call you if the result is negative. But please go on to the state site as the number of public uh, places for uh, coronavirus testing continues to go up and, and you, the site will list those. But um, the site only lists those that are being um, supported um, by the state. Uh, what we don't have is that there are a growing number of doctor offices that actually are providing that tests, whether they're um, uh, urgent care centers or private doctor's offices. What, um, and those numbers and those addresses and information on those sites will not be on the state website. Um, I'm asking for physicians uh, or, or physician practices in the East Brunswick area to please send to us uh, at the township if you're doing those uh, that testing and any information that we would need uh, to put on the website to help identify you and any particular uh, steps people need to take. Will they need prescriptions? Do they need to call up ahead of time? Do they have to have symptoms? Where the office is located? What type of test is being done? What the turnaround time is going to be for the tests? Uh, and we will, um, under this uh, uh, crisis circumstance, put that information on our uh, website so that individuals in the township who are uh, showing signs uh, and can't get to any of the state sites uh, may be able to utilize your facility if you're opening that uh, to um, general residents outside of your uh, practice. I'm also going to continue um, um, talking about those individuals and local groups that have really stepped up this time uh, during this process uh, to help out those who are um, in greatest need. Uh, we have a bunch of local groups, one in particular that's been sending and donating food to the, the hospital and hospital workers, and that's been organized almost exclusively by um, former township councilwoman Denise Catrino, uh, and she's been working with individuals, collecting from people in town and bringing food um, to hospital workers. 
the East Brunswick Chinese organization and group, uh, which I've mentioned earlier, continues to provide the township with uh, masks that we then bring over to the hospitals, and it's very, very much appreciated. Several months ago, most of you know, I had started the um, Mayor's Charity Fund, um, which I'm not organizing. It's run and managed by uh, a, a team of uh, trustees. They are actually organizing uh, food to be delivered as well to the hospitals, and they're working with uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital to help um, offset some of the costs uh, by trying to put some of their healthcare workers who live a, far, a pretty big distance from the area uh, at um, area hotels uh, so that they could uh, be able to get back and forth to the hospital faster and not put their own families at risk. And the charity fund is looking to help offset some of those costs. Our East Brunswick Chamber of Commerce is working on programs along with our uh, Parks and Rec Department uh, to put on, uh, whether it's uh, uh, programs that are being supported by businesses that are within the, the chamber, whether they are um, lectures on uh, business, lectures on accounting, lectures on um, what to do on this time of uncertainty uh, economically with unemployment, uh, classes for exercise, uh, and they are looking to work with our own township to try to help keep people um, occupied with um, interesting program, again, while we're all stuck at home. Next week, I'd like to put on a program dev uh, devoted entirely uh, to the economics of, of COVID as it affects East Brunswick residents, whether that's, again, unemployment, uh, taxes, um, all of these type of things that matter to um, both residents and to businesses here in the township. So um, please stay tuned. Um, as always, um, stay put um, and stay safe. Mm -hmm.